What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to graph parabolas in this form right here. F of x is equal to ax squared plus c. Okay, so first of all, this a right here is just a coefficient, and it's either gonna be positive or negative, right? So if this number right here is positive, your parabola opens up like that. If it's negative, it opens down like that, right? And then this plus c part is just your y-intercept. So remember, your y-intercept is just wherever the parabola crosses the y-axis. Okay, and whenever your function is specifically in this form right here, ax squared plus c, this plus c part also tells you where the vertex is. Okay, so the vertex and the y-intercept are the exact same spot. So I'm going to show you that with these couple examples right here. So let's do this one first. f of x is equal to 7x squared plus 4, right? So you can see here that we have a positive 7, positive number, right? So we should expect our parabola to open up like that. And here we have a plus 4. So the parabola should hit the y-axis at positive 4, right? Now, in order to graph it, all we need to do is graph a few points. So we can make a little xy table like that. And some easy numbers you can use are negative 1, 0, and 1. These are normally going to be some of the easiest numbers you can use. All right, so we're going to plug in these right here for x. So starting with negative 1, we're going to plug it in. So we're going to get 7 times negative 1 squared plus 4. And then here we're going to have 7 times 0 squared plus 4. And then we're going to have 7 times positive 1 squared plus 4. Right here, uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So positive 1 times 7 is positive 7. And 7 plus 4 is 11. Uh, here, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 7 is 0. And then 0 plus 4 is 4. And then here, 1 squared is just 1. So 7 times 1 is 7. So 7 plus 4 is 11. Okay, so here's the three coordinates that we're going to graph. And here's a coordinate plane. Boom. All right, so the first point we're plotting is negative 1, 11. So negative 1, 11. That's 11 spots right there. And then 0, 4. So then 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 4 is right there. And then 1, 11, right? 1, 11. Okay, so then we can just play connect the dots. Well, I should probably go through there then. Connect the dots like that-ish. Okay, so like I said, whenever you're graphing parabolas in this form right here, right, ax squared plus c, this number right here at the very end, the plus c part, just tells you where the y-intercept is, but it also tells you where the vertex is, okay? So you can see we have a positive 4, so our vertex right here is also at positive 4, right? Here at y is equal to 4, okay? So again, that would mean that our vertex is right here at 0, 4. Okay, and the other thing you want to identify is the axis of symmetry, which is just a vertical line that runs straight through the vertex, right? So right here, it's exactly on top of the y-axis, or at x is equal to zero. Okay, and then the last two things we want to identify are the domain and the range. So the domain is just your, basically your x value limits, right? So for all these parabolas, it's always going to be all real numbers. So you can write it like that. Or you could just say from negative infinity to positive infinity, all right? Either answer works there. And then for the range, it's your vertical limits. So here, the lowest point on the parabola is right here at y is equal to 4. So we can say that the range goes from positive 4 all the way up towards positive infinity, right? So we could write it like that. Or you could also say that y is greater than or equal to 4. All right, let's try this last one here. So we have h of x is equal to negative one-third x squared minus 2. All right, so you can see our a number right here is negative, right, negative one-third. So since it's negative, our parabola is going to open down like that. And again, this number tells you where the uh, parabola is going to hit the y-axis. So at negative 2, y is equal to negative 2, right? So let's graph this. So again, we can make a little xy table. Okay, and then we're going to plug in those easy numbers again. So then we're going to plug it into, uh, let's see, we're going to have negative one-third times negative one squared minus two. And then here we're going to have negative one-third times zero squared minus two. And then negative one-third times positive one squared minus two. Okay, so first solving this one right here, negative one squared is positive one. And then positive one times negative one-third is negative one-third. So then this is equal to negative one-third minus two. And two, we can convert that into a fraction, right? We can write that as six over three. So we can say that this is equal to negative one third minus six over three. Now it's a little easier, right? So we have the same denominators. 
So then this is going to be equal to, let's see, negative 1 minus 6 is equal to negative 7 over 3. And if you want to convert that to a mixed fraction, it would just be negative 2 and 1 third. Or as a decimal, this would be equal to negative uh, 2.3 repeating, right? Either of these are probably easier to work with. So let's just plug in negative uh, 2.3 repeating, right? Negative 2.3 repeating. Okay, and then next we have, uh, let's see, 0 squared is just 0, and then 0 times negative 1 third is equal to 0. So 0 minus 2 is equal to negative 2, okay? And then here, uh, well, this one's actually going to be the exact same as this one, right? So it's going to be negative 2.3 repeating. Okay, and you can calculate that if you want, but that's always going to be the case because if you look at this last problem right here, uh, we had negative 1, 11, and then here we had positive 1, 11, right? So then uh, a parabola basically just reflects itself, right? So this side of the parabola is going to look the same as this side, the slope and everything. So if we have an 11 over here, we're going to have an 11 over here. So that's the same thing over here. So uh, here we have negative 2.3, so here we also have negative 2.3. So now if I make some room, we can graph this. All right, so here's our graph. So now let's plot this first point, negative one, negative 2.3. So negative one, negative 2.3 is about there. And then zero, negative two, right? Zero, negative, or sorry, negative two. And then one, negative 2.3, right? So then one, negative 2.3. Okay, and it looks like our y-intercept and vertex is right where we expected it at negative 2, right? So now we can just play connect the dots. So your graph looks like that, right? And the two things you want to identify, again, is the vertex. So this is at 0, negative 2. And then the axis of uh, symmetry is still right here, right, at x is equal to 0. And then the domain for this one, again, is going to be the same thing, all real numbers. And then the range is going to be a little bit different. So here we're going from negative 2 down to negative infinity, right? So we can say it goes from negative 2 to negative infinity, or we can say that y is less than or equal to negative 2. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.